Hostile Terrain 94, Undocumented Migration Project. This exhibition is installed in Art Alley, which is located on the first floor of the Hub Robeson Center. It is in a lounge space that is viewable 24-7. Hostile Terrain 94 is a global call to action hosted by the Undocumented Migration Project and Hub Robeson Galleries. Hostile Terrain is a participatory art exhibition occurring in nearly 150 cities around the globe aiming to bear witness to and memorialize thousands of lives claimed by the U.S.-Mexico border since the 1990s. The exhibition invites collaborators, citizens, and community members alike to write identifying information known about these migrants and map where their lives were lost. Hostile Terrain 94 raises awareness about the human consequences of policies such as prevention through deterrence. The Undocumented Migration Project, UMP, is an arts education research collective aiming to humanize the migrant experience between Latin America and the United States. UMP projects are collaborative public endeavors meant to inspire and engage participants to work towards positive social change. I think it is compelling to see that most tags are located close together and in one area. We see a few tags spread out, farther away from the mass, and that translates to people who have gotten farther away but were still met with a similar fate to the others, which was ultimately death. Each tag represents a determined person. Despite how far it seems like they've gotten, no one can imagine how these people felt, what they've endured, and we can never nearly put ourselves as close to understanding how their situations were. But from the overview of all the tags delicately placed on the wall of Art Alley, we don't just see a scale model of the event, but we see a collective of strong people who deserve to be remembered even if we don't know their names. Personally, I think this is a great community participation effort because it's not just happening at the University Park campus, but Commonwealth campuses are encouraged to participate as well, and they have. I like that certain classes incorporated this exhibition into their lesson plans so that students who have not been exposed to the Hub Robeson Galleries were guided to our location and were able to partake in a humbling experience. In addition to completing the tags accurately, individuals are met with empathy as they read the disturbing words of the fates of these people. It creates a solemnness, but each student or individual who actively fills out each tag essentially is giving each migrant the respect they deserve and that they didn't receive at the time of their deaths. I think it is also substantial to see that some participants feel more emotional ties and are compelled to make additional art and notes on the back of the tags. That extra action adds a personal touch to the tags and it really is a deep found token of respect for the individual the tag represents. Small Planet by Catherine Mann. The Hub Robeson Center has commissioned a site-specific wall painting located in the first floor eateries by artist Catherine Mann titled Small Planet, the walls of the Hub Robeson site are taken over by lush, floating vegetation. The piece was created on location by combining pore painting on vinyl, wallpaper, and Yupo paper with delicate mural painting directly on the wall. The combination of stain-like, gestural pores and controlled drawings of flora endemic to Pennsylvania create an incongruous, vibrant porthole into what appears to be another planet but a planet created through documentation of vegetation that are often considered to be local weeds. The piece extends along corners and into adjacent walls, furthering the sense of a fantastic, immersive other world created through accumulation of the most mundane ingredients. So it's hard to find a favorite piece because it's a mural. So it's all one piece, but I just love the way that it makes me feel so vibrant and so alive even inside and especially nowadays with the whole pandemic and everything and because we have to be inside so much, I really appreciate this idea of taking the outdoor in and allowing me to feel that. From this exhibition, I hope people take that same sense of lightness that it gives me. I also hope that it reminds people of all the earth saving initiatives that we need to take on us, especially through the individual action that we can really influence in order to save our planet. And I think it's really fitting that the that the piece extends over like where recycling happens in the hub and I think it's like a great little reminder within the art that I think is so gorgeous. Human Expectations by Natalia Arbelas, Micaela Amato, Sujin Choi, and Malcolm Smith. This exhibition can be viewed in the exhibition cases stationed throughout the first floor of the Hub Robeson Center and online. Each artist approaches the form of the human head as a map or apparition expressing systems of knowledge, disruption, and social difference. 
Weighty, incisive, and unflinching, these works connect deeply to the worlds of emotions, feelings, and embodied knowledge. Working from their interests, stories, and origins, these artists consider the limitations and possibilities of human expectations, their ignorance, perceptual limitations, and potentially their magic. I think this exhibition showcasing four artists' interpretations of central themes of identity, as well as subliminal and overt types of human expectations, is quite fascinating. Each artist is unique from the next, with the different media and approach, but we can see the commonalities between their artwork depicts a struggle. Choi's work focuses on awkward moments and internal feelings and emotions that emit from those moments. Amato's pieces are multicolored and focus on the confusion of her identity, and that is, it is complex and a battle to establish which she feels most drawn to. Smith's pieces delve into the racist depictions of African Americans juxtaposed with abstract pieces of traditional African vessels. His work was made during the time of the former President Obama's election and the hostility towards him running. Marbella's pieces focus on traditional Peruvian river traditions and less remembered cultural identities of Latin American identities, among others. It's interesting because they're still relevant to each other and draw inspiration from certain histories as well as current events. Clearly recognized in Smith's artwork, he was especially influenced by the current events around 2012 during the time he created his pieces. I hope people come away more mindful about a few things. I want people to ponder about what their identity is and what it means to them. I want them to ask themselves what connects us as human beings and what ultimately divides us. Those decisions will ultimately create a new mindset or give individuals more clarity and empathy for others and themselves. All of Amato's pieces for this exhibit incorporate multiple colors. A mixture of colors, as I interpret it, represents a mixture of cultures and identities. Care Not Convenience by Chewan Li and Kelly Scholl MacArthur. Plastic, it is convenient and pervasive, life-saving and the root of suffering. It is so ingrained in our lives, it is hard to imagine a world without it. This imagining lies at the heart of the exhibition, Care, Not Convenience. Created entirely with salvaged plastic, this collaboration between an artist, designer, and an environmental science researcher aspired to shed light on society's dependence and careless overuse, as well as thoughtless disposal of plastic. The primary material used for work creation was found and collected plastic bags. The extensive exploration of this petroleum-based material has led to methods of fusing sheets of plastic with heat and making art forms with functional design capabilities, such as wearable art and hanging space dividers, and attention to minimizing waste in processes of production. My favorite pieces are these necklaces that hang on the other side of a wall in the gallery. Um, I think they are so incredibly gorgeous and there's something very monolithic, almost mythic, I guess, in a way about them, of art. My first reaction to seeing the exhibit was very visceral. I'm a, I'm a dancer, I, I grew up dancing, and, um, and so I loved the way that the pieces were almost architectural in a way, and they like they created a space that I wanted to move in. And then I'm also I'm also Korean, and so there's a ton of little like Korean characters um, and letters all over the different pieces, and those just made me feel so at home in a way. And I think that that's like the like absolute genius of this piece is that it lulls you with like its beauty and with the way it makes you feel comfortable and at home, and then also at the same time you're reminded by the fact that this is messing up our planet and that we need to do better in order to make sure that we can have a world that we're proud of and create a world where nature is allowed to live and flourish. From this exhibition, I hope people take the same things that I do of the sheer beauty and gorgeousness of these pieces, but also the internal call to action that seeing all this plastic reminds me of. Border Exchange is an installation in the Hub Robeson Center wall case. Rosales Silva's exhibition, Border Exchange, pairs two of the artist's paintings with the site-responsive wall painting. Rosales Silva's work exists in the space between borders and between classification. A meditation on the ever-expanding histories of brown peoples in the United States, his abstract work considers the vernacular cultures of American Southwest with the Western art historical canon 
and the political and cultural connections and disparities between them. Spoken and written Eurocentric language as a system of knowledge has been historically weaponized against brown communities. Rosales Silva believes it is important to adapt to, invoke, and reimagine the weapons of colonization, utilizing art making to reconnect with and create innovative methods of non-Western communication untethered from written or spoken language. His smaller pieces cut wood, and the top plane is PVC with small, deliberate cut shapes that consist of the same rough te texture as the first piece. Again, at first glance, one might miss that, but I think his attention to detail and mastery of rough surfaces conveys his determination and resilience for representing and advocating of brown cultures in the United States. Abstraction is sometimes hard to interpret, but I hope others can appreciate the vibrant color choices as well as the artist's care and precision of his shapes amidst the rough texture. I hope people can understand that these must have been difficult pieces to render, and I want people to appreciate his successful efforts for doing so. I think people may initially associate the color schemes with more southwestern cultures, but I encourage people to read the brief description of the artist and his message after they interpret the abstract work themselves. Personally, I'm a fan of Rosala Silva's larger piece, Chopando Tamarindo, because of its vibrant color palette and surprising texture. It reminds me of a rough concrete wall. You wouldn't think about wanting to touch it, let alone paint on it. But Rosales Silva claims the surface and demonstrates such control over it with his precise lines and shapes that at first glance, one wouldn't know that the surface was actually rough. I think this represents him reclaiming his culture with pride.